On a crisp February morning in 1461, two armies vying for control of the throne clashed here in these very fields. Welcome to episode two of Battlefields of Britain. This is the Battle of Mortimer's Cross. In this real-life Game of Thrones, two family houses vied for control of the throne. On one side, the House of York, and on the other, the House of Lancaster. In 1454, Richard, Duke of York, was made protector of the realm after King Henry VI experienced a mental illness. It was this turning point which saw Richard and the House of York formally challenge Henry's right to the throne. The first battle of the Wars of the Roses took place in 1455 at St Albans. It was a Yorkist victory. Relative peace ensued until 1459 when the battles of Bloor Heath and Ludford Bridge took place, the former being a Yorkist victory and the latter a decisive Lancastrian victory. 1460 saw another Yorkist victory, this time at Northampton. However, on the 30th of December, the Lancastrians defeated and captured Richard, Duke of York, along with his son Edmund, at the Battle of Wakefield. Both Richard and Edmund were executed. The Yorkists claim to the throne, and all hope now lay with Richard's eldest son, Edward. Edward was at the head of a Yorkist army in the marches, whilst the main Lancastrian force under Margaret, still revelling in its victory at Wakefield, was heading towards London. Edward, who was readying his men to join the Earl of Warwick to intercept Margaret, received news that a Lancastrian force under Jasper Tudor had marched from Wales and was heading eastwards towards him. Edward readied his men and chose this site on the west bank of the River Lug, just south of Mortimer's Cross, to give battle. As dawn broke, Edward and his troops were met by a Parhelion. Three suns were visible in the sky. Being superstitious people, this initially frightened the troops, but Edward assured them it was a sign that represented the Holy Trinity and God was on their side. Edward took this symbol as his emblem, the sun in splendour. It was believed that Edward Mortimer was stationed in Hereford as it was a royalist stronghold. Meanwhile, Jasper Tudor was currently down in Wales, somewhere in the Aberystwyth area, recruiting for their army, for his army. Now Jasper needed to get to London, to Margaret on due. However, Edward knew that he needed to stop him, to intercept him, and what a better place to do it would be at Mortimer Cross. Over the years, where the battle was said to have been fought, over recent research, it's not actually where it was fought. Now, why has this been a change of opinion? Well, because not a great deal was recorded about the battle itself. So we've enlisted the help of our friend Danny, who's made this a bit of a pet project of his. Danny, how are you? Hi Pete, welcome to Herefordshire. Thank you. You've uh, made this a little bit of a pet project of yours, haven't you? Yeah, it's going to be a Being bit... a local man. It's an obsession. When you've got a battlefield in your back garden, you want to start researching it. Oh, absolutely. It's like <laughs> me of Edge Hill. <laughs> but yeah, um... so, what I'm... so what are we actually looking at here? Because now... I remember for the research building up to this, there was a road that's been found. Yes. Not so much found, but forgotten. Yeah, it's a forgotten road. Most, most of the Battle of Mortimer's Cross has been romanticised by the Victorian era. And they looked at the current features of the ground at the time, which is the major road going through Mortimer's Cross. Looking back and trying to cut away some of the, the fat that's been added onto the battle, there was actually a road that cut through the middle of the fields that we see here in front of us. And that was picked up on a map, the Ogilmies map, of 1675. So that new road, as it were, crossing the original Roman road, actually throws a bit of a curveball into the uh, planning. It does indeed. So you're saying that this road is going basically sort of along the foot of where we are now? Yep, the other side of this rise here, which is known as the Buzzards, yep. across there, 
across the old Roman road, which is now Hereford Lane, yep. and going straight to London. So he was going from Aberystwyth to London. Which makes it very logical, because that's yeah. where uh, Jasper was coming from, wasn't if, it? If you've got an army of three, 4,000 blokes, and you've got a, a wagon train behind that as well, mm. you'll want to use major routes. You're not going to want to use dirt tracks and uh, back lanes. You'll want to be using major roads. And things like an old Roman road, which still would be in good condition, but also this Ogilby Road, which is now long since forgotten, would have been their major routes of access. It would have been indeed, yeah. So popular belief up until recently is believed that the battle is taking place around here. Is that is that right in what I'm saying, Dan? Yes, yeah, correct, Peter, yeah. The Mortimer's Cross area up here, the crossroads that we can see on the current day map, is commonly thought to be fought in this area. But when you start looking at the map and start looking at the lay of the land, you'd no way want to back your army into a valley and with a river on one side of you. But the biggest misconception of this is this road here, we can see here, the B4362. It, at the time, didn't exist. It was only a dirt track. And why would you want to put your army down a dirt track? Well, especially when you've got about 5,000 men, well, if not more. <laughs> yeah, it's a, and also, it's not leading to anywhere that Jasper wanted to go. Yeah. He wanted to go to London. If he went up that dirt track, he's going past Sir Richard Croft's castle, which is a big royalist stronghold, yeah. but then he's also got to get to Ludlow, which is also a well-known royalist stronghold. So whereabouts would you say the castle is in preference to this map? Is he quite local to this area? Although, you know... Yeah, it's just slightly off the map. So if you go from this area here, about a, a kilometre up, this bit here, mm -hmm. is Croft Castle. Right, OK. So he, he does... So he knows this land Oh, this is well. this is hunting ground. Yeah. He knows this ground. So this Roman road that we that I mentioned before, that that's somewhere along here isn't it yeah the roman road itself comes up from hereford so it comes up from here and it goes all the way up the center here so i'll just draw it on quickly with this pen it goes all the way up so this here is the roman road right the nice yeah. steps it actually follows true north very well and that goes all the way up to omsley there's about a kilometer up the road there which we'll learn about a bit later in the battle but what dr ford of the mortimer's cross battlefield project highlighted and which is quite groundbreaking really is the Ogilby Road. Yes, so this is the road that, that's been forgotten. Yeah, it's been, yeah, it was picked up on a, a map that was found dating from the 1670s, if I remember correctly. But really, really interesting is, it comes from Aberystwyth, which is over here. It comes down this track here, over to North End Farm, and then cuts across the country, along this line, past Newhouse Farm, which we'll go and have a look at a bit, because that's really interesting and cuts across this field and joins up which the original settlement here was known as West Town and further along it goes down into Kingsland. So already we've now made a Mortimer's Cross. Well, yeah exactly that is the original crossroads in this area. Well I think we should go and have a look at that then Danny. I think the next point of call will be Newhouse Farm. Indeed. We've just arrived at Newhouse Farm, where it's believed the crossroads actually were. So we are literally in the centre of the battlefield. So Danny, let's, let's go through on how the battle lines are being set up. Well, Edward was already on the field at the time. Uh, he needed already set up. Remember, we've got Sir Richard Croft of Croft Castle, which is just up here. This is his back guard. And he recommends putting archers covering the crossroads, according to Gregory's Chronicle. So for, for now, we'll just put Richard Croft just floating around there with his archers, his recommended archers. Now, Dr. Ford's work is fantastic, but he recommends the, uh, that the actual battle was more toward, toward Kingsland. Now, military tactics, I know using today's tactics, but they were still been prevalent at the time, and Edward was a pretty switched on cookie. Any crossroads, if you hold two legs, you control the crossroads. So putting that into, into, into the fact, shall we say, and Edward already being here, I reckon Edward was near enough where we are at this moment, Pete. He was around here. On his left flank, he had William Herbert, here. And on his right flank, he had William's uh, father-in-law, Walter, around this location here. And that kind of makes sense as well, because you've got the archers actually covering the army, be it that it could be closer in as well. Yeah, the, one of the Chronicles mentions that the battle was fought on a Great Plain. Mm. And obviously all this area is a Great Plain. Yeah. But it's, it's, 
also as well, if you think about it, Jasper's coming down from Aberystwyth. He's on the march. He's coming over the hills here where we've just been with the buzzards. He's marching downhill and he's seeing an army laid out in mm. front of him. And he's probably put them on the back foot. Most yeah. of his army were newly recruited, unblooded men. And that's the thing, is that these, these men are veterans, aren't they? Yeah, they've already um, been in battle many yeah, times. And like I said before, is Edward, is, his blood's up, isn't it? He, you know, his dad and his brother was killed literally yeah. two months beforehand. And also, these uh, Edward's army was mainly made of local men. Yeah. They were craftsmen and other, other local families. So they knew this land. They knew how what best to fight. We have got marshy areas located down here and further up north. So he actually has, in a way, has channeled them in nicely. He's put them on the back foot because they're coming from high ground. Also, he's got the river lug on his right-hand side. Some chronicles say that the battle was on his left-hand side. But this makes them all more of the sense. Mm. Now we've got Jasper Tudor, he's coming down, he's seeing this army in front of him. So obviously he's going to start deploying. Jasper, he's going to be in front. On his right hand side, he's got his father, Owen Tudor. And on his left hand side, he's got James Butler. I've used their normal names rather than their titles yeah. at this time. To make it oh, more simple to understand. They, flip, they yeah. flip and flop so many times <laughs> their titles. It's just, just go by their normal names. Yeah. So that's how the battle was basically formed up on the day. They're set, they're ready to go. They're expecting a swift victory. The first onslaught, shall we say, was by James Butler. And I'll use his full title, because it's quite a good sounding title. Uh, James Butler, the fifth Earl Ormond, Earl of Wiltshire. Very nice name. Mm. He assaulted Edward's right flank, forcing it to retreat across the road. So we're moving them forward a little bit. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we'll start moving these, because they always they all like moving in line. Walter, his unit is reported as routing and retreating north towards Omnistry, pursued by James Butler of Wiltshire. So what we'll do is now, we'll, these are now routed, so they're probably swinging round, and they're head now heading north, pursued by them. Jasper Tudor, he then attacks Edward in the centre, but is repulsed and Edward counterattacks. So obviously they're moving now forward a bit. They're moving now forward a bit. Owen Tudor then tries to encircle the left flank, but it was defeated and then routed. So Owen Tudor's now he's trying to take the left flank, so he's going to be trying moving mm. around. William Herbert, he's going to mount, he's going to match that because he's not going to let them attack. He's going to try and get their round. But then they are routed. Now this is really, really important. This route. So we'll mention these routings. Mm. So they're routed and they're going that way. And why they're going that way is important, which we'll mention in a bit. So either a half of William's forces are following Owen, yep. or they're going to carry on with Jasper. Jasper Tudor's centre is broken and it's classed as a victory for the uh, Yorkists. Why I said this is important earlier is Owen Tudor is reported as being captured in Kingsland, which is just down here. This was known as West Town at the time. Kingsland is here. He's reported as being captured in Kingsland and uh, he was later moved into Hereford, which we'll cover on in a bit. So, Peter, the routed Lancastrians had two choices to retreat. Owen Tudor and some of his men headed towards Kingsland. Mm -hmm. Some are reported heading down this lane on the way to Hereford. Oh, wow. You join us here at the nearby village of Kingsland, where Owen Tudor would be captured by the Yorkists. And afterwards, he'd be taken to Hereford, where, in front of a baying mob, would meet his grisly end. In honour to his great victory here at Mortimer's Cross against the Lancastrians, the now King Edward would pay for the two chantries to be added to St Michael's Church here in Kingsland, which would further cement his legacy and an act as an ever constant reminder of his great victory here at Mortimer's Cross. Don makes the short trip to Hereford to find out more about what happened to the captured Owen Tudor. You join us here at Hereford Town Hall where I'm holding a sword. Not just any sword though, this is the Morning Sword, which was believed to be carried by Owen Tudor during the Battle of Mortimer's Cross which of course he was captured afterwards. This is John, who is the, what is your role here? I'm the mayor's officer yep. for the city of Hereford. I'm custodian of the museum. And it's because of this gentleman here why we've been able to get access to this amazing sword. So we know that it was potentially used by Owen Tudor during the Battle of Mortimer's Cross. It was. So what is its role today? This is the city of Hereford mourning sword. The only time this sword comes out of the cupboard is if the, the queen or king dies of any monarch or the mayor in office dies. The last time it was used for the mayor in office was 1902 
uh, when the mayor died, literally two weeks before he was due to stop being mayor. And obviously the next time it was used was for the Queen. Wow. So its purpose is still very much in use today. Yes. Thank you very much, John, and it's we appreciate pleasure. it. Thank you. This plaque, set into the pavement of Hereford city centre, marks the spot where Owen Tudor was executed. From here, his body was taken outside the city walls for burial, and his head was placed upon the top step of the Market Cross. Since Henry VII, all monarchs of England have descended from Owen Tudor. Our journey brings us here to the spiritual centre of Hereford, where Owen Tudor was executed 100 yards down the road for being a traitor to the Crown. And so concludes our retelling of the Battle of Mortimer's Cross. We hope you folks have enjoyed watching this. If you don't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And of course, you can always join our members club. The link, of course, is in the description of this video. Until next time, keep, keep history, history alive. alive.